Hello everybody, this is Dr. Cole. It's Sunday evening, September 15th, and this will be the announcement for week five for Political Science 1013 on the first eight week schedule for the fall term of 2024. Okay, everybody, we've had the midterm. Some students are gonna to have to take it late, but most of us have taken the midterm. We're, of course, we're on this compressed schedule and we've gotta move along pretty quickly. I've got quite a bit for you all to look at between now and the third exam, which will be coming up Tuesday the 24th. That is a week from Tuesday, so it's coming up pretty quickly. It will cover units five and six. The class notes are up on the course website, and there will be some outside readings. I've just gotten a series of announcements out, so please try to bring up those outside readings and contact me if you have trouble. Two of them are from the Wall Street Journal, uh, so you should be able to access that through the OPSU library. Now there will be a discussion, and there's a, there's a couple of things to look at for the discussion. Okay, so there's several things to look at for the discussion and the exam, so there's a good bit to do. The, exam, the discussion will be coming up Thursday and Friday, the 19th and 20th. Let me see. I believe that's correct, the 19th and 20th. And as I mentioned that in that announcement, there's quite a bit to look at for that discussion, but it's important. Okay, so Thursday and Friday, the discussion, and then the following Tuesday, the exam. Now, unit six on the federal bureaucracy is a very brief unit. I'll try to say a bit more about that a week from now, which will be coming just a couple of days before the exam. But let me say a few words about what we try to do in the class notes for Unit 5 on the Presidency, which is the longer of the two sets of class notes. We talk about the recent presidents who went back to Carter, and then we start by looking at what the Constitution has to say about the President and the Presidency. And the Constitution confers a number of powers and duties especially in the area of foreign policy and national security, and we talk about that to, to a considerable extent. The Constitution also lays out the procedure for electing the president, of course. Now, everyone, it's coming up. It'll be here before you know it, less than 60 days. We need to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it too much because it will be over and done with before you know it. And we want to teach you about what will be going on after that, but it is nevertheless important. Okay, so we say quite a bit about, we, we say a good deal about that uh, in the class notes, and a couple of the readings are related to that, the process for electing the president, which is different in many ways from choosing the head of government and chief executive in many, many other countries. Okay, now, all that to a large extent is based on what the Constitution says about the President, but that's not the whole story because uh, just knowing what's in the Constitution tells us relatively little about what makes a President successful or strong or competent or not. We talk about a number of ways in which the President could wield influence, especially say, with regard to Congress, if there's a bill that the president wants to get passed. Okay, how can the president try to influence Congress? And this would also apply to influencing other powerful interests in Washington. Pressure groups, bureaucrats, the judiciary, political parties, but especially Congress. Okay, what can the president do? It turns out the president has a number of tools but the president has a relatively mixed record because the president is a powerful actor, but there are other powerful actors in Washington, D.C. We then finish up that unit by talking about, to some extent, the apparatus around the president, the helpers that the president has, which have expanded considerably the apparatus around the president in the post-World War II period. There are positions such as chief of staff and press secretary, all part of the White House staff, which on the organizational chart comes under the executive office of the president. 
there are any number of bureaucratic structures that are answerable more or less directly to the president, okay, such as the National Security Council, or the Council of Economic Advisors. Okay, there are a number of such bodies. And then there's the cabinet, which perhaps is less influential than some of those other bodies that operate directly within the White House. And we talk at the very end of the notes about why it's said that other countries have cabinet government, but we do not. And the cabinet doesn't meet all that often in our system. All right, so that in a nutshell is what we try to do in the class notes for Unit 5 on the presidency. So look at that, and you may also want to take a peek at the very brief Unit 6, about which I'll try to say more in a week or so. All right, so discussion on the 19th and 20th, exam on the 24th, and I should also mention everybody looking at your syllabus, remember, the 26th is the deadline uh, to communicate with me about your term paper topic. I've heard from a couple of students about this already. Okay. So the eight-week term moves along quite quickly. Okay. We're getting closer and closer to the end all the time. So we have a relatively quick turnaround from one exam to another. So we've got a fair amount for you to do to look at for the exam and for the discussion. So I hope you'll be able to take a look at all that and we'll say a bit more about Unit 6 on the bureaucracy when we talk to you in about a week, which will be just before the third exam. Take it easy, study hard. Hope you'll take part in that discussion, and we'll talk to you once again in about a week from now at this time. Thanks a lot.